welcome to a brand new series of Ease the Load. I hope you've had a great summer and you feel ready for a new term. So to help you get back into the swing of things, we're going to find out how some teachers prepare for a new academic year. So you never know, we might even pick up some tips and ideas along the way. Firstly, we meet a primary and secondary head teacher and hear their reflections on the past school year. Then teacher Caroline Hodgson shares some words of wisdom gained over 11 school years. And finally, we talk to Will Jenkins, the new kid on the block. How has he found his first year of teaching? Will he stay or will he go? So let's start at the top. What's it like being a head teacher and managing the whole school? Where do they start and who eases their load? Theresa Laybourne at Townend Primary School in Sunderland has just finished her first year as head teacher. I've come to see how she got on and what she'll do differently this year. Hello, Hello. 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 So what opportunities does a start of a new academic year create for yourself? Well, on reflection of last year, there are lots of things that I know I could have done differently. Things like, I didn't think I was well planned in the diary, so I need to plan certain things in so that I can actually achieve them because the terms are flying so quickly. We get to the end of the term and I haven't realised the jobs mm. that I, I needed to do, so I know I can do that. It's also sharing my vision with new starters mm. and developing them, um, and it's wonderful seeing teachers being developed. So what advice would you give to any other head teachers? The main advice is not to be superwoman. To know that you can't always be the super person, super well organised person that you possibly mm. think you are. It's to ask for advice. Mm. Another one is I've got a three tier tray system mm -hmm. um, where I prioritise all of the paperwork that comes into school mm. and jobs that I need to do. Uh, I have a whiteboard in the staff room so I put lots and lots of jobs on there for people and communicate with people. How do you maintain your work life balance? I have got some work-life balance and this term I've been practising, if you like, um, putting it into my timetable. I do go to the gym at least three times a week. Mm -hmm. A Saturday is put aside to spend time with my family, my husband on a night time, and we go out. And the governors have said that I should take half a day outside of school to do strategic thinking, to look at preparation, to do those jobs that possibly when I'm in school people are always going to ask for my time. Was there any point then that it all got too much and the workload was, you know, you thought, I'm not going to cope with this? There's been lots of times during the year. I don't think I've ever thought out of giving up as being a head teacher, but lots of time through the year where the workload has just gotten, mm. got unbearable. So I've had to delegate that workload to other people. Mm. Um, but it's all been worthwhile when a child's come through the door and mm. I've been able to share something with them and that's what makes it worthwhile and that's why I'm a head teacher and I want yeah. to do the job. West Park Community School in Derby is a high school with about 1,300 pupils. For head teacher Brian Walker, that must be a heavy workload and a lot of preparation. Just how does he manage it all? The start of a new academic year is, uh, is a real opportunity for a school to um, to make those uh, issues of, of aims and vision clear. There are a number of um, disciplines that heads have to set themselves to manage the, the, the job that they do. And among them, mine, are, are making sure that every decision is for the benefit of pupils. Put pupils first, you can't go far wrong. Um, confront issues, um, make sure that you get around the site at least twice a day all of those things. I find that it helps my own aid memoir to have a flip chart in my office and anything that I read, anything that anybody says during that particular day I'll mark upon the flip chart. Ideas then occur and I'll annotate them that main idea. What I end up with at the end of the year is a, a, a set of information that I control through for the, applying to the kinds of um, situations that we have in this school because we're always searching for that best solution, that best answer, um, what to do with disaffected youngsters, what to do with the, the most gifted and talented, how to get the views of parents, how to engage governors and so on. I think as far as work-life balance for heads is concerned, I think that we have to accept that there isn't one. Um, it's part of the deal. You become a head, 
this work becomes your life. But that said, it's a cracking job and it's one of the greatest joys that you can have to influence the shaping of a school that can provide um, such a basis for uh, the development of young people. And whilst you're taking all that in, here are a few more top teaching tips. My handy hint for the coming term is to have computers and the staff room because I think it's a really good place to work. Um, you have your colleagues around that can help you if you need help. You have the internet at your fingertips, which is always helpful when lesson planning and trying to research what you're going to teach. My handy hint is to use traffic light cards to assess students' learning during the lesson. Each student gets a traffic light card. If they're completely happy with something that you've covered in the lesson and they understand it fully, they will hold up the green light. If they're not too happy, they don't fully understand it, they need extra work, they will hold up the amber light. And if they don't understand it all, they hold up the red light. My handy hint is to have a monitor for everything. Have a merit monitor, a register monitor, have a book monitor. And that way you can reward the kids constantly and you can praise them all the time. Some great ideas there. Now to Caroline Hodgson, who's been a primary teacher for 11 years. I ask her about her job and whether she's got any advice to share. What do you hope to get from the new year? Happy children, children who reach their targets for numeracy and literacy. Making sure as well that I use that PPA time mm -hmm. successfully so that I haven't got so much to do at home and just keeping that work-life balance. So the PPA time is going to be statutory in September. How are you going to ensure that you've planned effectively for it and that you fit it into the timetable? Um, you really have to be quite uh, meticulous in the way that you plan for it and make sure that whatever you've set down you're going to do for that PPA time that mm. you definitely do it because it's quite easy to go in and think I've got a huge list of jobs to do mm. and how much will I get through in that time and then you find that by the end of the time you haven't actually covered anything so mm. you need to have one task and be focused that you will complete that task in that time. Have you implemented any new strategies over the year that you're planning on carrying on next year? Yes, two new ideas actually assessment for learning. Um, assessment for learning is actually to do with success criteria where and marking, very very influential on marking so that the children are actually focused, they know what the learning objective is at the beginning of the lesson, they know what they need to do to be successful and then the children actually get marked on that. And what, what's the second thing that you're going to introduce? Assertive discipline which has huge implications for the way the children behave and the way that the the teachers and any member of staff really within the school respond to children. It focuses mm. on the positive. Mm. Um, so you're using prompts within your class like eyes on me, a countdown from five to actually mm. get the children focused. And the children understand as well it's all about choice. So if mm. they make the choice to not follow the rules then there's a consequence. Mm. But if they do follow the rules then there's rewards like mm. marbles in a jar, you get extra play time, you get the reward. Mm -hmm. Year three you worked so well together. I was really impressed with the talk that was going on between you and your partners. I'm going to award a marble. So Mitchell, would you please go and get a marble for the class? Well done, Year Three. You can give yourselves a clap for getting the marble. Is there any advice that you would give to other teachers on starting a new term? Making sure that you go in with fresh eyes, making sure that you go in and you get the classroom exactly how you want. Don't be scared about whoever's been in before and how they've set up the classroom. You go in and you, you sort it out mm. in the way that you want. Use of magic sticks, um, just find lolly sticks and put them into a jar, label them with the children's names and it works extremely well. It stops any mm. kind of fuss when you're talking about find a partner. You actually just pull out two sticks. Works really well when you've got collaborative groups as mm -hmm. well. And there's never any question about who they're put with because mm. obviously what you would like is the perfect mix for somebody who's a higher attainer to possibly to work with somebody who might need a bit more support. Mm. Emily P and Chloe S. Frank and Emily B. So how do you maintain the enthusiasm to teach? Making sure that you're not in one particular place with your career. I've actually made sure that I've taken on different roles and I've actually taken on more responsibility and I find that keeps my enthusiasm going because you're meeting new challenges mm. each time you've got a different role. Um, and I think that keeps me quite enthusiastic. Hopefully you like Caroline's ideas, but here are some more that you might find useful. My handy hint to ease my workload is to use a rhythmic clap to get the children's attention in class, either at the end of whole class or group work. For example... Get specialists in. Um, 
I think it's always uh, important that you can uh, use people to teach the things that you can't do. My handy hint is to use a switch signal like raising your hand to attract attention and get the order in the class rather than shouting your head off. Time now to catch up with Will Jenkins, an NQT with one year's teaching under his belt. What has he learnt and how is he preparing for his new term? I've really enjoyed this year as an NQT. The PGCE year certainly does prepare you for perhaps the range of behavioural patterns that, we, that children often have within the classroom, whether it's challenging uh, towards the teacher or whether it's an accepting of the educational atmosphere that we provide. Now what we're going to do in a minute, I'm going to put you into groups, and groups that you're not normally used to working with, because they work with different people in order to bring out the best qualities in yourselves. Looking back now, uh, at the beginning of the year, although I did lay down behavioural strategies and patterns about how they should behave, I've been stricter with them. I was far more amenable than I should have been, and this allowed uh, challenging pupils to perhaps assert their own authority and assert their own discipline within the classroom. For NQT, starting in September, the advice offer is mainly to do with behavioural management. I can remember from my PGCE, we were asked to write down any qualms that we might have about teaching in the classroom and everybody put down that what would happen if they lost control of the class. Now I can reassure NQT this September that won't happen and to make sure that children are focusing on tasks, the one great piece of advice is to describe their behaviour rather than questioning what they are doing. To say, for example, if someone's clicking their pen, that's a sign of anxiety or not concentrating in the classroom. So to say you are clicking your pen has this magic effect that they will drop the pen and pay attention to you and more often than not apologise. If you say why you're clicking your pen, that offers them an opportunity to answer about, well, I'm clicking my pen or I can't be bothered. Scott, you've got your pen in your mouth. <laughs> Carl, you're talking across the room. Inappropriate behaviour. What I learned earlier on is the unconditional love between a parent and a child is always there, but sometimes it can get in the way between actually having to admit that their child may have perhaps behaved quite badly within one of my lessons. And I felt a little unsure about that and, and I felt a bit annoyed and I didn't feel entirely comfortable. But then I suddenly realised that the majority of parents, no matter what set you have, will consistently support how their children should behave in school. One of the main things that I've also instilled and something I've come up with myself is positive phone calls home. A lot of the time, uh, phone calls home to parents are to deal with challenging behaviour, difficult behaviour, and to let them know that perhaps they've not met the requirements of the course that they've been put on. In order to counteract that, because certain parents may not have had a positive experience of schooling, is to call home, not to negotiate about how the child can improve, but to tell them how well their child is doing, so how well their results have been going, how well their behaviour has been, uh, and how much they've been able to share their success throughout the class as well. I will be sterner with the children come September. That's not to be absolutely draconian uh, or be bullish in any way. It's an environment to learn in rather than an environment to feel comfortable to learn in. And then the comfort is added later. Well, we've come to the end of our first show already. I do hope we've managed to inspire you with some little ideas that make a big difference. Until next time, goodbye. If you've got any load easing ideas to share, then please contact us here at www.teachers.tv forward slash ease the load.